Hey, are you trying to set up a family group on your Windows 10 PC? Well, I'm Mike Roderick, and in this video, I'm going to show you how. I'm currently logged on to the family's machine as the adult in the family, right? Uh, and I want to create a family group so that I can control or have a little bit of insight into uh, what my children are doing and maybe even control a little bit of their activities across those Windows 10 devices, even their Xbox and or their Android device. So to get started, we're going to create what's called a family group. And this is where you basically enroll your family members into a group. I've already started the process, so we don't have to wait as long. I'll show you how it's done. On my Windows 10 PC, signed in under my account, I'm going to go to Settings. And from here, I'm going to click on Accounts. Now, underneath Accounts, I'll find the settings for Family and Other Users. This is where we're going to start. All right, and here you can see I've already started my family group. Now, when you first come in here, it'll just be you, and you'll add your family members. You can either use the link here, add a family member, and add them right from your Windows 10 device, or you can click on Manage Family Settings Online, which will take you out to Microsoft's webpage where you can manage your family group there. Right. You can see I've already added two, added Jane and Judy. Notice one is listed as an adult, and one is listed as a child. And this is going to control what level of access and what they're able to do uh, with these devices. So I'm going to click, if I click add a family member here, you'll see that I get the option to either choose member or organizer. And again, that really controls what level of access they have to the family group. And then I have a spot there to enter their email address. So each user that's part of your family group will require an email address uh, that you'll enter here. This will send them an invite. They'll respond to that invite and join your family group. You can also do that through the online setting. So I'm going to click on that as well. Show you that one. It's going to take me out to account.microsoft.com slash family. Here I can see the same information. I can see the members of my group currently. And up here at the top, I have a plus sign, and this is where I can do the same thing. I can click that, choose either member, organizer, enter in the email address uh, that'll send out that invite, which they'll respond to to join my family group. Now, once they're part of my family group, that's when I can now start managing their access to their Windows 10 devices, as well as the Xbox and any Android devices that they've installed the application on. Right? So we can see here, again, I am considered the organizer because I set everything up where I can manage permissions. I can choose to leave family group. I have another adult who's also listed as an organizer. And I have one child listed here. So they're listed as a member. And once I've added them and they start using their Windows 10 devices, they would use their account to log on to either this same PC or their own PC if they have one or the Xbox or their Android devices. And then what I'll be able to do is I can go in and I can monitor their activity. Sometimes the screen takes a minute to load up as it reaches out and tries to see what they've been doing. I don't have a lot of activity on my little demo family here. We're not going to see too much, but you will get to see the kind of information that you would be able to monitor for your children you can see that I can look at what apps and games they've launched. Looks like Judy has launched Microsoft Edge. I would see any suspicious websites that they might have tried to visit. Below that, I can see any searches they've done, as well as screen time on the different days. Right? So these are the kind of things that I'll be able to control through family groups. I want to take a closer look at that screen time. Here I can choose to Put on some device limits. Maybe I want to control how long they spend on that Xbox, make sure they're doing their homework, or whatever it else is they're supposed to be doing. I can simply turn this on, right? And I can choose to set a schedule of when they're allowed to use those devices. Now, by turning this on, I actually chose to set a schedule for all devices. If you leave that off, you can set a schedule for each individual device. Maybe you want a different schedule for your Xbox versus the Windows 10 device. And if there were more devices that they logged into, those would all show up here. You can see the green is indicating allowed. So if I want to change some of that, come in here, I can set the time. Maybe they're only allowed to get on that Xbox after dinner and after their homework is done. We're going to say maybe about 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. We'll go ahead and click Add. And we're going to remove that 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. That's just a little too long. And we'll click Save. And you can see on that day, I have now changed it. And I would need to do that on each one of those days, of course, uh, to make that effective. 
right? So that's screen time. Again, you can control that on a per device basis. Underneath app and game limits, here's where you're going to be able to block certain applications. Now, again, I don't have a lot of activity going on just yet, but you will see a list of applications. Normally, this would show you what applications are using and how much time they're spending on each one of those applications. And I can choose whether or not I think that's okay and if I want to try to block some of those applications. It is taking a minute to go out and retrieve that information. I'll go ahead and click Get Started there. And here I can see, like Microsoft Edge, for example. I can see the time that she spent in Microsoft Edge. If I want to change that or block that, I can simply choose Block App. There's a list of all the other apps that she might have launched recently. If you'd installed games and things like that, those would show up and you could choose to block those. In addition, we can do content restriction. This is especially useful for some of our younger children. Currently, it's set to any age, no restrictions. So if I hit this drop down list, you'll see that I can choose the age that's appropriate for my child. Right? Now, what that means is, and we'll click on View Allowed Ratings right below there, gives you a little guide. If I choose for 18 and up, then it's going to change the, what the, the ratings are for the movies or the games that they're trying to play. We can also control spending. This is a big one for a lot of us parents out there uh, because it's really easy to rack up a bill uh, if they go out to the store and start purchasing or playing a game and get some kind of add-ins or hey, I just want to buy some extra lives or whatever the case may be. Here I can control that spending. I can tell them that whether or not they require permissions or I can set whether or not they require permissions to even buy things. You can see I've got the two things that are turned on there, needs, organizer, approval to buy things and email me when they get stuff. Well, two things are going to happen there. When they go out to the Microsoft Store and try to buy a new application or uh, purchase some in-game add-ons, it's going to make them submit a request to me before that's allowed to happen. It's also going to email me, let me know that they are trying to do that. So you can use either one of those or any combination of. Now, if you don't want them to have to give you or ask for your approval, um, you can still work or control their spending. You can actually set a Microsoft account balance. So maybe I want to give the freedom to, to buy what they want or what they think they need, um, but I want to put that within limits. So I can add money to an account and then give them the ability to buy things, but they won't be able to go beyond the balance of that account. And you can also see the history of things that they've purchased through the bottom. Here. All right, and the last thing is going to be find your child. Now, this is especially useful on a mobile device, on an uh, Android device, if you've installed what's called the Microsoft Launcher. So on their Android device or a Windows 10 phone, if anybody has one of those, um, you can install Microsoft Launcher. And once you do that, you can come in here and you can see it's turned off currently because my Judy doesn't have an Android device with a software installed. But if she did, I could turn this option on and then I would be able to find her on this map. Right? So I would know exactly where she was, which can be very, very handy. Now let's take a look at, uh, um, so that's really all the settings I think that we can see. Uh, for a child. I'm going to switch back out to activity here. Um, we can also, what else did we want to take a look at? Um, we want to set restrictions for, we did the screen time. I think we've done everything there. We want to see it from Judy's perspective. Let me go ahead and log off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to log back onto this Windows 10 PC uh, as Judy. And then we'll get to see from her perspective what happens, like when she goes out to the store. Really, it's not, you're not going to see any difference. Like when she logs on to the PC, she, there's not going to be much difference unless we've chosen to block a certain website. Um, let me switch over to Judy's account. If I can remember her password because she changes it all the time. Trying to keep me out. I really haven't done any blocking, so we're not going to be able to see what would happen if I blocked a website. But I can show you what happens if we go to the store, because we did turn on the, the ability to prevent purchases, which is a big concern of a lot of parents. So once I get logged in here, I'm going to head on out to the Microsoft Store. And once I get into the store, let's see, what would Judy want to buy? Let's say she wants to play a game and all her friends are playing. She wants to come out here, so she clicks on it. It's just money, so I'm just going to go ahead and buy that. Clicks buy. And we'll give it just a second. Whirs and grinds and thinks about it. 
We'll authenticate as Judy so far. She thinks she's in the clear. Everything's working. And then she gets this notification. And it says, ask a parent for permission. You need permission to buy this. We'll let you know when you're good to go. You can see she can click ask now or cancel. So if she goes, oh, yeah, I'm not going to buy that. I don't want to have to ask dad for the money. She can cancel it out. Or she can click ask now. And that's going to fire off a message to me. I'll get to approve that. You can see it says keep an eye on your inbox to see if they said yes. So once we approve it, she can come back to the store and then she can complete that purchase. So that's a look at some of the settings that you have available with the family group. This gives you the ability to enroll all your family members and then have a little bit of insight of what they're doing on those PCs and Xboxes, how much time they're spending, as well as a little bit of control of where they're going out there on the internet and how much money they're spending while they're out there. Hey, if you like that tip, make sure you check out more Windows 10 tips and tricks here. And don't forget to subscribe to the IT Pro TV YouTube channel.